Maybe you've never been in a bowling establishment before. Or perhaps you have, and it wasn't this kind of place. The carefully supervised kind that millions of discriminating bowlers take for granted today. In the approved places, where bowling is best, you'll always find a healthful, wholesome, family environment. Maybe you're afraid to try to learn to bowl. It's really quite simple. Actually, every person has the makings of a good bowler. Anybody can master the fundamentals of the game and with consistent practice become competent at it. How can you know for sure? Just look at the amazing variety among bowlers. Every size, age, kind, breed and class from all walks of life. Every type imaginable. 20 million men, women, and children in America are regular bowlers. They make the game our country's most popular participating sport. Bowling is a healthful recreation that the whole family can take part in and enjoy together all year round. If so many millions of folks of every possible description can and do bowl, and get so much fun out of it, it's a cinch you can learn to bowl and enjoy it too. First thing you have to do is change to bowling shoes. Street shoes are not allowed on the lanes. Hey, Peg, let's get a move on. They won't hold that lane for us forever. Oh, why don't you three go ahead and bowl without me? I'll have more fun just watching. Hey, what kind of talk is that? Bowling's a snap, Peg. You'll see, it's fun. Come on, let's live it up a little. Nothing to it. We'll teach you all you have to know in two minutes flat. Once we get out there, that is. Come on, Peg, let's give it a whirl. We'll never know till we try. That's the spirit. We'll have both your bowling like champions in no time at all. Lives there a bowler of any degree who doesn't fancy himself an expert? Especially when it comes to giving advice about the game. Every member of the Bowling Proprietors Association provides a complete assortment of top quality bowling balls for your use. If you bowl regularly, it's advisable and more convenient to own your personal ball and shoes. See the desk man if you wish to buy them. He's set up to fit you quickly and accurately. The main idea is to knock down all ten pins with one roll of your ball. 
Do that and you've got a strike. Oh, too bad. We know not warmed up yet. When your first roll doesn't get all the pins, you bowl the same ball again to complete your turn. If all pins are down after the second roll, you've scored a spare. Otherwise, your turn is scored as an error, and it's the next bowler's turn to take a crack at all ten pins. These two regulars could use some instruction instead of trying to give it. If they could bowl, like they can alibi, what stars they'd be. time you go bowling, tell the desk man right off the bat that you've never bowled before. If you're in a place that belongs to the Bowling Proprietors Association, he'll see to it that you get some expert coaching. It doesn't have to be like this. This is learning to bowl the hard way. And you develop bad bowling habits in the process. What an alibi artist. The Bowler's Lament. A sad, sad song indeed. Enough's enough. What say we knock it off and start all over again? Let's just imagine that our little party is joined by two of the ablest bowlers and bowling teachers of all time. Ned Day and Marion Latterwig. Of course, you don't have to have personal coaching from famous professionals to learn to bowl or improve your game. Your nearest Bowling Proprietors Association member can provide you with good bowling instruction. But let's see how Marion Latterwig and Ned Day go about it. When you take your ball from the return rack, put your palms on the exposed sides and lift up. Any other way, you risk getting your fingers painfully pinched. The first principle of good bowling is a confident, comfortable grip in a well-fitting ball. Most bowlers use the popular three-finger grip, thumb and two middle fingers in the ball, with the other fingers comfortably spread, not bent nor curled under. In a well-fitting ball, the holes permit free and easy thumb and finger movement. With the thumb in its hole, the middle joints of the fingers should be over the inner edges of the finger holes. The key to good bowling is timing. The coordination of footwork and arm swing in the approach and delivery. Timing can make or break a bowler. Smooth, rhythmic footwork is fundamental. Let's take the basic four-step approach. Just the footwork. Right-handed bowlers step off with the right foot. Left-handers with the left foot. Right, left, right, and slide on the left. Okay, let's take it again this time at a leisurely, normal walking pace. One, two, three, slide. 
Don't be afraid to get down close to the floor in that slide. Being comfortable and relaxed are essential to good bowling. The main point is to make the approach with an easy, unhurried, rhythmic walk. Speed is not necessary. Hey, take it easy, boy. Unhurried, remember? Don't charge in your approach. Just use a nice, normal walking pace. Your slide must always end short of the foul line. If you step on the foul line or over it, you're penalized. A few practice approaches will show you where to start from. It depends on the length of steps you take. Your stance must be relaxed and feel natural for you. But be precise too. Comfortable, but not casual. A correct stance is essential to good coordination in your approach. When you take your stance, check yourself on these points. Body almost erect, leaning a bit forward. Shoulders and hips square with your line of approach. Eyes fixed on your target. Knees bent slightly, with your weight equally distributed on both feet, which are comfortably set no more than a few inches apart. Toes pointing at your target, starting foot slightly behind the other. Hold the ball directly in front of you, anywhere between belt high and shoulder high, at a comfortable distance from your body with the ball's weight supported mostly by your non-bowling hand. That's got it, gal. A mighty lovely uh, stance. The push-away starts the arm swing. Whatever height you hold the ball, push straight out. Whoop, not like that. Never upward. Push it straight out away from you. Straight out to full arm's length. Let the ball's own weight start it downward and swing it like an easy-going pendulum. There's no need to strong arm the ball. Its momentum carries it to the top of the backswing. Its weight sends it through the forward swing. You don't have to force the ball nor throw it. After you push away, let your ball do the work. Good bowling does not depend on physical strength. Now let's coordinate the timing of arm swing and footwork. The push away is the trigger of the approach. Push away and take off start simultaneously. This is the key to good timing. Watch it in slow motion now. Ball and foot start together. The ball moves through to the top of the backswing at the end of the next to last step, so the forward swing and slide begin simultaneously. The end of the slide and the release occur together. This is the explosion point that gives authority to a good bowler's delivery. Let's take the slide and release again. The forward swing and slide start together. As the foot stops and the hand starts the upswing, the thumb and then the fingers slip out of the ball. Watch that again. The ball is not thrown. The hand simply lets it slide away as the arm swings up. Look at that follow-through. The development of a good follow-through is neglected by far too many bowlers. Yet the effective value of an excellent approach can be cancelled by a poor follow-through. 
When you follow through, let your arm swing up until it's reaching for the target. Be sure your arm is reaching for the target when your follow through ends. Here's the follow through again. Arm reaching for the target, eyes aiming steadily, all helping to direct the ball. Now let's take a close look at our target. Ten big fat pins just asking for it. The numbers on these pins designate the pin spots. Ordinarily the spot number does not appear on the pin. For right-handed bowlers, the strike target is the 1-3 pocket. The bowler's primary aim is to fit the ball neatly into the strike pocket. The straight ball and the hook ball are the two types most commonly bowled. The straight ball is easier to handle and guide until a bit more experience and control are acquired. It's held with the thumb on top, aiming at the target, and released with no twist nor lift. The straight ball is bowled from almost the corner of the lane on a straight line to the target. This is the straight ball path. The hook ball starts closer to mid lane, travels almost straight until it nears the pins, then hooks in to the target. After you master the straight ball, you can develop your hook ball. Most experts prefer it. The hook ball is bowled with the V formed by the thumb and forefinger in line with the right shoulder and aiming at the target. This hand position helps put a natural English on the ball when it's released, causing it to hook. Let's watch the hook ball release in slow motion. The lifting action of the upswinging fingertips leaving the side of the ball imparts the English, or hook action. The hook ball enters the pocket from a wider angle, causing less ball deflection and more mixing action in the pins. That's why the experts prefer it. There are two popular aiming methods, pin bowling and spot bowling. In pin bowling, you keep your eye fixed on the pins and aim directly at them. Pin bowling is best for beginners. It's natural to look and aim at the object one's trying to hit. Spot bowling presumes that a closer target is easier to hit. We'll use this one to demonstrate. Spot bowling also assumes you've mastered a uniform approach. Your footwork has to start and stop at the same point each time. You pick a spot where you know if you bowl exactly over it, you'll hit the pins you're after. To spot bowl a strike ball, most bowlers use this built-in spot right here. Each time you bowl, you fix your eyes on the spot, not the pins, and aim to bowl over it. The exact location of the spot varies with the bowler. With practice and experience, you simply pick out a spot that works best for you. Whether you pin bowl or spot bowl, use a straight ball or hook ball, the main thing is to fit that ball neatly into the strike pocket. Of course, every bowler, even a star, 
faces a lot of spares. Consistent spare shooting is what builds a bowler's average. Making or missing a spare or two can win or lose a match. Concentrate as hard on a spare as you do on a strike. Harder, maybe. The stars have a motto. Make sure you get your spares. The strikes will take care of themselves. Spares are shot from three basic angles. One is the five-pin angle. It's bowled from almost center lane, just about like a strike. Use this five-pin angle for all middle alley spares. Then there's the seven-pin angle, bowled from the right corner of the lane, cross alley to the left. The seven pin angle is used on all left of lane spares. And there's the 10 pin angle. From the left corner, cross alley to the right. This 10 pin angle is for all right side spares. The cross alley idea is fundamental. Shoot all off center spares from the opposite corner of the lane. Hold it a moment there. This is a right side spare, so you start from left of center. Angle your body to face the spare, shoulders square with it. Walk straight toward it, bowl cross alley, and follow through on the same line. That's the way to do it. A left side spare this time. Start from the opposite corner, facing the spare cross alley. Shoulders square with it. Walk directly at it and follow through on the same angle. Nice going. And here's a middle alley spare. She bowls it almost center lane from about her normal strike shooting position. Bowling is easy when you apply a few simple fundamentals that anybody can master. After you've learned the fundamentals, further improvement comes only with consistent practice on a regular schedule. Nothing can take the place of practice for increasing your bowling skill. The once a week league bowler should get at least twice a week practice between league sessions if he wants to up his average. 